So far in this module, we have looked at two approaches for digital controller design, namely emulation and direct digital design. The result of both these approaches is a description of the digital controller in terms of a discrete time transfer function. In today's video, we look at how to convert this controller transfer function to a set of equations that can be implemented in a digital processor. We touch on the possible errors that could occur in the calculation of these equations and we look at several ways to implement the controller in order to address these errors. Before we get to the implementation of the controller, let's revise the digital control system configuration. The continuous time plant is described by the transfer function g of s. The continuous time output is y of t, which is sampled to form y of k. It is then subtracted from the reference input r of k to form the error signal E of K, which is also the input to the controller. The design controller is given by the discrete time transfer function D of Z. Its output U of K is passed through a zero order hold circuit, after which it forms the plant input. The controller transfer function is defined as the Z transform of the controller output divided by the Z transform of the controller input, which can be written as a ratio of nth order polynomials. When we divide the numerator and denominator by z to the power n, we arrive at this equivalent transfer function. The question we address in this video is how to convert this transfer function to a set of equations that can be implemented in a digital processor. The easiest way to realize the controller is to convert the transfer function to a difference equation. We do this by multiplying a cross, which gives us this equation after which we perform the inverse z transform and make u of k the subject of the equation. We can now see that the controller output at any time step u of k can be calculated from the n previous controller outputs as well as the current controller input and the n previous controller inputs. To implement the controller, the following operations need to be performed at each sampling instant. The output should be sampled, typically by an analog to digital converter, the reference input should be generated and the sampled output subtracted to form the error signal. The difference equation is then calculated, which produces the controller output. This output is then passed through a zero order hold circuit, which is typically implemented as a digital to analog converter, which then provides the plant input throughout the current sampling period. To illustrate the difference equation approach, let's work through a simple example. Suppose we have designed this lead lag controller, which has a gain of 5, lead compensation with a 0 at 0 0.6 and a pole at 0 0.2, and lag compensation with a 0 at 0 0.95 and a pole at 0 0.99. We can multiply out the factors to arrive at the standard transfer function form. When we use this result, we can write the difference equation for this controller as shown here. This equation contains 5 multiplications and 4 additions which should be very cheap to calculate for any microprocessor. The previous two controller output values and the previous two controller input values should also be stored. The difference equation realization is only one of several possible controller realizations. Although they are all mathematically equivalent, a certain realization might be more or less sensitive to calculation errors. One source of calculation errors is the quantization of the sampled output signal which could be significant if a low resolution analog to digital converter is used or the analog output signal is badly scaled compared to the range of the analog to digital converter. Another possible source of errors is the accumulation of round off errors in the controller calculations, especially if it is a complex controller where the calculation of the controller output depends on long sequences of calculations. The third source of errors is the quantization of the coefficients of the controller equations due to the finite precision with which a number can be represented in a digital processor. This could become significant in complex controllers, causing errors in the locations of the poles and zeros of the controller. In addition to these calculation errors, the time taken to sample the plant output, perform the controller calculations, and apply the controller output to the plant input could be significant compared to the sampling period. This causes an unmodeled delay, which could produce unexpected behavior. For the rest of the video, we will look at three alternative ways to realize a controller, which might produce a more accurate controller calculation. 
The first alternative controller realization, the direct realization, is very similar to the difference equation realization. The idea of this realization is to introduce an intermediate signal, x, and to write the denominator part of the controller transfer function as the transfer function from the controller input to the signal x, and the numerator of the controller transfer function as the transfer function from x to the controller output. When we take the first part of the transfer function and multiply across, we get this expression. After we perform the inverse z transform and make x of k the subject of the equation, we arrive at this equation to calculate the intermediate signal x of k in terms of the current controller input and previous values of the signal x. We can follow a similar process to write the controller output u of k in terms of current and previous values of the signal x. Let's look at how our example controller would look like with the direct realization. From our controller transfer function and the results we obtained on the left hand side, we can write down the two controller equations as shown here in green. We can see that the equation coefficients are the same as for the difference equation, but in this case we only have to store the two previous values of the intermediate signal x instead of the previous controller input values as well as the previous controller output values for the difference equation case. We can visualize the controller calculations with this block diagram, which we easily draw from the two controller equations. The intermediate signal x is shown in blue. A second alternative controller realization is the cascade realization. The idea is to split the controller transfer function into a product of simpler transfer functions and then implement each of the simpler transfer functions with a direct realization. The sections are stringed together by making the output of one section the input to another. Let's apply the cascade realization to our controller example. We can split the controller transfer function up into three factors, the controller gain, the first order lead compensation part and the first order lag compensation part. The block diagram of this realization is shown here, where this part corresponds to the lag factor, this part corresponds to the lead factor and this part corresponds to the controller gain. Two intermediate signals are labeled as x1 and x2. From this block diagram, we can write down the equation to calculate the first intermediate signal x1 of k, the equation for the second intermediate signal x2 of k, and the controller output signal u of k. Implementation of this controller amounts to calculating these three equations at each sampling instant. The third and last alternative controller realization is the parallel realization. The idea is to split the controller transfer function into a sum of a gain and simple transfer functions. A general block diagram of this realization is shown here on the left, where we can see that the controller input is the input to each block and the outputs of the blocks are added together to form the controller output. Let's apply the parallel realization to our example controller. We first take our controller transfer function and split it into a constant plus a transfer function with the order of the numerator less than the order of the denominator. We then perform partial fraction expansion on the transfer function, which leads to the sum of three terms, a constant and two first order transfer functions. We can now draw the block diagram as shown here, and we label intermediate signals x1 and x2. From the block diagram, we can write down the equation to calculate the first intermediate signal, x1 of k, and the equation to calculate the second intermediate signal, x2 of k. The controller output can also be written down from the block diagram in terms of the controller input and previous values of the intermediate signals. Implementing this controller realization therefore amounts to the calculation of these three equations at each sampling instant. In this video, we have looked at several different ways to realize a designed digital controller. It is not possible to say that any single realization would always produce the most accurate results. A good approach is to be aware of the possible implementation errors and to analyze each of the possible realizations if accuracy is an issue and to choose the best realization based on this analysis.